Now we have finished all of the big pieces. You should at this point have a front, which is a pentagon with two points on it. This is going to be... These are going to be the legs. On the front, that is. <laughs> on the back, you should have something that looks like this, which is a pentagon with four points on it, and a hood, which of course has to be sewn on to the back, up here, on the last edge of this pentagon. And <clears throat> the thing we need to do in this video, and I don't know how far we'll get, but hopefully you will finish it today, and otherwise it'll be next week. <laughs> but the things that are left for us to do is we need to make one of these. Did I put that? Yeah, that is the right way. We need to make a sleeve here and a sleeve for the other side, which is just a point, and I will show you how to do that. It's exactly the same as these points, but nevertheless. Then there's going to be a line here of double crochet, which will ensure that we can finish or <laughs> close the buttons that are going to be on either side. So that, yeah, so that we can flip this down and put someone in here and close it back up without too much trouble. So I'll be showing you this and the edge today, and hopefully we'll also get to actually crochet it all together and finish it. But We'll see. <laughs> Let's do this! So to begin with, we need to crochet a sleeve. And it is done exactly the same way as all of the points are. The only difference is that we need to now begin a new piece. So start by making a slip knot. And then chain as many as as chain as many stitches as you had stitches on the edge of your uh here we are so this is my pentagon right i have my one row of holes here and the other row of holes here so you just count how many you had here or you remember how many you ended with and you have to to just chain the same number as that for me this is 32 so there is one Four, And then of course you can perhaps check it with your crochet piece. Personally my chains are never never the same size as a chain that has been worked in, so for me that would be, be really no point. But if that is something you can do in the tension that you're working with, then please do. Make sure that it is correct. Now hold this stitch and chain three, and then go back into the stitch you just held and crochet one double crochet in each stitch on your chain. And I think if you're, if you know how to do a foundation chain with double crochet in, that might be a better solution. That might just be me. I just really don't like working in the chain. I think it's a really annoying way of starting. Whereas the foundation double crochet chain is, it's pretty difficult to get right. But at least you don't have to work in the in the chain. And of course it's it's one of these things where once you know how to do it it's it's not that difficult. But I, but there is a bit of a learning curve. It wasn't just picking it up. It's it's basically like a um 
You know the the Romanian uh, lace crochet things. They have a lot of different, very very pretty um, sort of. It's a little bit like an I cord in <laughs> in knitting, but you just crochet these these very pretty cords, and some of them are very easy, and some of them are a little bit more difficult, and they're all kind of worked in the same way as you do foundation single crochet and foundation double crochet. Where you sort of... You create the chain and then you work a stitch and then you create chain and work a stitch. It's a little bit advanced, but... It's really fun and <laughs> there's actually a lot of, of really great resources for it on, on YouTube. Which is awesome, I mean, <laughs> there are so many different... Um, what's it called? <laughs> like, like, work that you can do with fibers that I, have, I think I would have never seen had it not been for YouTube. So that's... I think that's pretty cool. Or maybe it would have been for the internet, maybe YouTube is not actually the, <laughs> the limiting factor here. That was the last stitch and we now have, we now don't have to work in the foundation chain anymore on this project at all. So I am more than happy. So let's see if I hit something that's just no, which is, so again I have my holes here and I have holes here and I just want to check that this is going to be a good size. It's a little bit small. I think I can fix that when we... Or maybe I'm stretching it. No, it looks, it looks too small, but actually when you put it down, it is the same size. So up here it looks too small, <laughs> but when you put it down on top of it, it actually is the same width as, as this. So, we'll keep it. The next row is exactly the same. So you just chain three, oh, chain three. And then you do one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. I have to also apologize for the lighting this time because my my light box actually legitimately died this time. So we're down to this is a lamp over here. <laughs> it has a little bit of a spotlight rather than the nice diffused light that comes from the the light box, but you know. At least we are on the the less complicated part of the star which you have already seen me do before. So this, the new thing here was that you needed to start with the chain, right? But you have seen me do the points before and if you are actually crocheting this, you will have done, what is it, six? Six points already. So doing two more in a foundation chain shouldn't be too much of an issue, even if you can't actually really see what I'm doing because the lighting is just, Suboptimal, shall we say.
So that was the last on this row. And if you remember, then what we need to do now is we need to chain three, flip the work, then we need to decrease in the first two stitches. So we need to do half a double crochet or a one unfinished double crochet, and then we go into the next stitch and do another unfinished double crochet. Then we yarn over and we go through all three. Then we do one double crochet in each stitch across this until there are two stitches left and we need to also decrease in those two stitches. Oh. Here we go.
Okay, next thing we need to do is if we look at the front here, on this side I have crocheted two uh, two rows of double crochet here, and we need to do the same thing on the other side. So we'll just start at one point and then work back and forth between, again, on an edge, right? So between this row of holes and this row of holes. It's important that you do it on the <laughs> on the side, not on the, the one that you marked with your stitch marker or the one that you remembered. If you didn't mark it, you might just remember that this is the top, this is where the, the head needs to go, so we can't do anything to this. Not right now, anyway. So we need to have, this is the front, right? So. We have two points down here, they are the legs, and then we come up here, and this is the row for the one um, buttonhole uh, <laughs> thing, and we need one on the other side too, because we have two sleeves. So as I think I showed you at the beginning, the sleeve will be here, and there'll be some buttons on it, and then you can close it. Or maybe it'll be the other way around. I don't know, I haven't really decided yet. But what we need to do is just grab the yarn and find the first stitch on this edge. Then we will chain three and do one double crochet in each stitch until the other row of the buttonhole of <laughs> sorry. It's until we get to the other row of holes. We have holes here. And at the other side of the edge there will be another row of holes. Or of chain one spaces. Oh. And I really hope I don't run out of yarn doing this. I am almost out. It's it's kind of crazy that it was so tight. I mean, I've sort of been, I've just sort of crocheted the size that I that I thought I might need, and I've just, like, I, I didn't um, calculate how much yarn I would need to begin with. I just, as I think I mentioned in, in another part, that I, I got this yarn very, very cheaply, and I basically only got it to get free shipping. <laughs> so, um, I did not plan this, and it's, it's quite amazing that even though I didn't plan it, it, it turns out that there was oh, that there's just enough yarn to do the large pieces, the two um, the two sleeves, and now this part here and the and the hood, of course. Otherwise, it was kind of when I when I saw it sort of uh, get smaller. I'm working from a cone, so when I saw the the cone sort of shrink, I was thinking, okay, maybe we, maybe we do one of the sleeves in a different color, maybe we do the hood in a different color, something like that. But I had already sort of decided that I wanted the um, I wanted to cro crochet it together in a different color. So I'm not 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 that <laughs> unhappy with it, just. Uh, being exactly the amount that I needed for the front, the back, the hood, and the sleeves, and not then of course we we need the um, we need to crochet it together afterwards, and we need yarn for that too. But it's <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not going to be this yarn. Even if there were more of it left, I do think the uh, sort of creating an outline is is very nice on this because it is supposed to look like a star and. You know, sometimes you just need to, to punctuate the the point of your of your work. But yeah. Just hoping there is enough for me to just do this row and then one row back. And if there is, <laughs> it'll be a small miracle. No, I think I think I have enough for that. But <laughs> but no more. And it's a bit of a challenge too. This is because um, I didn't know the gender of of the child. Um, 
or now I do, I've known for about a month now, but before that, oh, see here we got to the end now. So what we need to do is just chain three and two. No, so I, I didn't know the, the gender and really making stuff for girls, it's just so much easier because if it's a little boyish, it's no, it's not a problem. Women in general can wear, I think, almost anything that, that men can wear, but it's a little bit different the other way. And, you know, every little detail and if you want to knit something, then every little uh, cable and stuff, it sort of all adds up to being very feminine. And so I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I think I like the the pattern created by this yarn. Because it, it could go for a girl, of course, of course it could, but I am expecting a boy and I think this will be fine for a boy too. It won't be too, too feminine. And I think the, the, um, when I crochet around in, I think it's going to be a lighter color that I'll use to crochet it all together. I think that also will will read like a a detail and not like a sort of little dainty decoration even though of course i love everything that is dainty and has lace on it and <laughs> ruffles and stuff but yeah i think that's in general what's very difficult about creating menswear is that it needs to be it needs to be masculine and at the same time it needs to sort of be basic it just needs to be the shape needs to be the loudest thing in it i am um, i have tried to to knit sweaters for my my boyfriend and it's it's just it's just really difficult because I thought I had sort of specific taste in clothing and interior and, and stuff. He's just, he's much worse. <laughs> he, ha he has much, a, a, a much narrower idea, I would say, about what, what he can wear and what he can't. And yeah, <laughs> it's just very... It's a bit of a challenge. And every time you want to add a little little button or a little detail, he's like, nope. <laughs> so here we go. So that was that. That was super easy. I'm thinking about perhaps doing some actual buttonholes in this. So this is these are pretty big and my the buttons that I have picked out will work for this. So you could just stick them through. But I do think I I will um sort of embroider some some actual buttonholes in here to make it a little bit more finished. It's one of the things that bothered me a little bit about the other one I did that the the buttonhole band didn't sort of look like a buttonhole band if that makes sense so this is what you should have on the front it just has a thing out here and a thing out here and then the legs of course <laughs> yeah as soon as I was done with the yarn the dog took the cone and ran with it so yeah, I guess I'm done <laughs> with the last little piece of yarn that was on there. So as I said, I want to create some actual buttonholes for my buttons. And I do this by using a embroidery technique from what's called Hadanga lace. Um, and this is actually called a buttonhole stitch. So it, it fits. <laughs> I'm just using some Yarn that is the same same weight as the yarn I crocheted the rest of the piece in. And I've just I'm going to have four buttonholes here, so I marked this 
as the point where I want the the last buttonhole on this edge. So this is um, again this is I have the top of the front here, this is the side of the front, and down here we have the legs on the front. So and also I, I don't think I'm going to have time to uh, crochet together today, so I will I will do that next time. So to begin this, you're just going to attach your yarn to double crochet over from where you want the hole to be. So if, I'm, if I start here, my hole is going to be here and it's going to use these two double crochet here and it's going to use the two double crochet on the other side and then there will be this space in between. Is that even? Isn't that a little bit bigger? Um... Hmm, okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, so it's, there's an uneven number of, of double crochet in, in between, so that's how it's going to be. I don't bother too much about attaching the yarn because I will be burying this end, um, this tail, as the first thing I do. So I want to come up on the front here. Then I am sewing from the outside under the two double crochet, going up on the other side, pulling the yarn through. And then I have this loop left and I'll just go through that loop and make sure that it is placed up here on the other side. So away from the hole I am going to have a line of these knots. I'll just continue doing that all the way around. So it's always in where you want the knot to be, up in the center, go through and then go back through the loop before you pull it tight or taut. Just sneak one more in here. I can fit about four or five stitches into <laughs> around two double crochet. Now I'm just going to continue underneath it. So of course I can't just go all the way around in the double crochet because they are on rows. <laughs> and I want to go around. So I'll just go into the stitches underneath here. I'm just stabbing into whatever I can I can find. And just trying to, to radiate out the stitch and make it look like I want to. Did I go into the... yeah, I get... <laughs> I think I am saying the thing about going underneath and into the, the middle a little bit for your sake, but also for mine because I keep forgetting. And it just can't. It doesn't work if you go the other way around. Then the knot is going to be on the the wrong side. Here we go.
and the rest I will do around the top edge here. Just make sure not to make it too tight so that it it will look like the other stitches. And when I get back to the beginning here, of course I have the issue that I can't... This continues all the way around. And they are interlocking. And I, I cannot do that for the last stitch, so what I will do is I will finish the last one here. And then I will go down into the next stitch here. So, that's it. So now I have a row of buttonholes. And I just need to sew in the end, and I'll do that just on the back here. And just go through. On my way back I will skip a loop, go back through and skip a loop and go back through and that's it so it might be a little bit hard to <laughs> imagine what that looked like when we're done but yeah i'm hoping that it will be not so much for you probably, but for me, I am I'm hoping that this works out. So next week we're going to do the the crocheting it all together and seeing it come <laughs> a little bit more to life than it is right now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next Friday.